we set in about 70 days. He said people in the Fishers neighborhood where the Dannon brothers lived were not in danger during the ongoing federal investigation. Stolen bags, broken windows, and petty crime are what people in the Irvington neighborhood on the east side are dealing with tonight. And as it continues to happen, one man who has lived in the area for 20 years is working to help his neighbors. RTV6's Nicole Griffin is finding out how and what his message is to his neighbors to protect their property. For the second time in just three months, a woman who lives here in the Irvington neighborhood had her car window busted out and her backpack stolen from inside. But a man who lives right down the street from here found the backpack in his alley both times and returned it. They just dump it out on the ground. It, there's always stuff everywhere, you know, you try to pick through it, see if you can find something that may have some identifier. It's becoming an unfortunate reality for Steve Henry, who lives in Irvington. The summer's been busy for sure. I mean, I found three bags behind the house in a couple of months, which seems excessive to me. But then again, I don't run around stealing people's stuff. Two days ago, he found this backpack with books, paperwork, and even a stethoscope scattered nearby. I actually found this bag a couple of months ago, same bag, same spot in the alley. Um, I woke up in the morning and there was just a giant hole in my window. The backpack belongs to oh, so this hard. woman who lives right down the street but does not want to be identified. She saw Steve's post on the Irvington Chatter Facebook page saying he found her bag in the alley once again. I'm so glad to see someone post on that Facebook page. There's my green backpack stuff, you know, spewed about. Um, it's kind of a bittersweet thing, like, yeah, someone found it, but oh, someone went through it again. She says this is serving as her final lesson to not leave her bag in the car, and it's one that Steve hopes others follow. He wants his neighbors to be aware that thefts like this are happening in the area. It's that feeling of invasiveness, I guess, is for lack of a better term, you know. Nobody wants that. Everybody wants to feel safe and secure with their property. Unfortunately, we live in a world where people will just take stuff. It doesn't have to have any value to them at all. It's a good reminder to lock your doors and take anything of value out of your car because thieves are targeting the area. Nicole Griffin, RTV6. Thank you, Nicole. And according to IMPD's online records, there have been more than 40 thefts since April 13th. A grocery store is closing today. A major setback for an east side area struggling with access to food. The Walmart neighborhood market off of North Franklin Road near 38th Street was one of the last full service grocery stores in that neighborhood. RTV6's Alyssa Donovan explains how the City County Council is looking to ease concerns for those residents in that neighborhood. People who live near this Walmart neighborhood market tell me its closure is going to have a major impact on their lives. I spoke to a few people who live in this apartment complex that's just right across the street. Several told me they don't have cars and they actually moved there because of its proximity to a walkable grocery store. It's the only place I can get there. I ain't got no car, so. Up until today, Demetria Smith worked and shopped across the street at the Walmart neighborhood market. Now I'm going to be going for my severance pay and look for another job. Probably going to pay the Menards. That Menards and a Save-A-Lot are just about a mile away. They're now the closest options for people who live in the Autumn Trails apartments to go buy food. The buses don't go down to Pelham Pike Walmart, so they have to go all the way down to Washington Street. Which requires a transfer and a lot of free time. Another 40 minutes. So, 45 minutes there, then you shop and 45 minutes back. Yeah, yeah. The Walmart adds to the list of area closures. Kroger closed two stores, and when Marsh went out of business, two of its nearby stores also shut down. You think that how could this be where there's such a dense population of people? City County Councilor Keith Graves recently took over the District 13 seat, vowing to prioritize the growing food desert. They asked me to represent them in crisis like what we're experiencing with the Walmart closure. We're looking for solutions. One of those solutions, Proposal 258, which would provide rides through rideshare company Lyft to get people to and from nearby grocery stores. The counselor says he's also looking for more long-term ways to fix the problem, something these residents say is vital to this area. Because there's a lot of people that need it. The Indianapolis City County Council is expected to vote on that proposal this coming Monday. 
I'm Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. And now at 6, a traffic alert for changes that will impact thousands of drivers in Marion County. In less than an hour at 7, all lanes of I-65 southbound will be closed from the south split to I-465 for the next 10 days. And then at 9 tonight, all lanes of I-65 southbound from the north split to the south split will be closed. That will only last through the weekend. Also at 9, all lanes of I-65 southbound from I-865 to I-465 will be shut down. That's expected to be done July the 29th. Now to Democracy 2020 and the race for Indiana Governor. Tomorrow, Republican Indiana Governor Eric Holcomb is expected to announce he'll be seeking a second term in office. An email from Holcomb for Indiana says he will be making a major announcement at the Hoosier Gym in Knightstown at 1 p.m. Saturday. You can watch the announcement live on the RTV6 app and Facebook page. And earlier this week, former Indiana Health Commissioner Dr. Woody Myers announced he is seeking the Democratic nomination for governor. Taxes are going up in Hancock County to pay for a new jail. This week, the Hancock County Council approved an increase in the county income tax to fund a new 400-bed jail and the necessary staffing. Starting October, the income tax will be 1.94%, up from the current 1.74%. The new jail is estimated to cost $43 million and will be built on county-owned land just east of Greenfield on US 40. The Hancock County Council came up with this plan after residents voted down a property tax increase last year. The sheriff says the current jail is filled beyond capacity. Tomorrow, you can pay tribute to Holocaust survivor Eva Kaur, who made Terre Haute her home. She passed away last week while on tour in Poland. There will be a candle lighting and remembrance ceremony at 1 o'clock tomorrow at the Candles Holocaust Museum and Education Center that she founded in Terre Haute. There will also be a special tribute to Eva and her life's work of forgiveness while never forgetting the Holocaust. And following that, there will be a visitation from 4 to 8 at the Bonn Funeral Home in Terre Haute. That funeral will take place there Sunday at 10. However, due to limited seating, the family is encouraging the public to attend one of two memorial services instead of the funeral. One will be Sunday, August the 4th at 2 p.m. in the Tilson Music Hall at Indiana State University in Terre Haute. A second memorial service set for Sunday, August the 18th at 2 p.m. in Clues Hall on the Butler University campus right here in Indianapolis. Well, do you have a great idea you want to pitch to Shark Tank? What you need to know ahead of time to make sure your idea stays your own as well as very protected. Indiana's farmers are hurting. What Governor Holcomb is asking of the federal government. And what a fantastic sight. Robert Wickens back behind the wheel. Dave first joins us from the weekend's IndyCar race in Toronto coming up. And it is a beautiful evening here in central Indiana, but those steamy 90s are going to be returning pretty quickly here in the Hoosier State. We'll take a closer look at your weekend forecast. You're watching RTV6 News at 6. Only at Bob's Discount Furniture. This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. Hiring Hoosiers, an RTV6 initiative to connect you to jobs and to explore those issues keeping you from landing those key positions. One big issue for employers is keeping skilled people in numerous professions from leaving our state. It is one reason that many different groups are working to maintain and retain homegrown talent. On the west side of Indianapolis, millions of people show up every year to connect somewhere. But the airport is also a place leaders can check in to network. We need more servant leaders. So this creates more servant leaders. Mario Rodriguez is the executive director of the Indianapolis International Airport. He hosted members of the Indiana Latino Institute Leadership Circle. It's made up of professionals from various industries looking to use their skills to not only expand their knowledge of central Indiana, but to find new solutions to existing challenges. On Thursday, they heard from IBJ Chair Mickey Maurer and Greg Maurer with the Heron Capital Venture Fund. Both emphasized the importance of people following their passion and building relationships. Get involved. Make sure that you're building your network, not just for the things that might be beneficial for you today, or that are part of your responsibility, but um, becomes a connector. I think that's how leadership begins. 
uh, when, when we make that decision to, to see beyond uh, the daily uh, tasks of our life and, and try to reach out. The Leadership Circle is also another way to keep talented and skilled people in the local job market and invested in the future economy. And at a certain point in your life, you stop thinking about yourself and you start thinking about your community. And not in a legacy sort of thing, but in a way, how can you help the community move forward? How can you make the community a little bit better? This is the first year for the Leadership Circle with participants from Eli Lilly and Company, Carrier, and Huntington Bank. In your community, check with your Chamber of Commerce or Rotary Club to see what leadership programs are available in your specific county. There are many people hoping to come up with the next best product that will provide good paying jobs in our state. As part of our Hiring Hoosiers initiative, we wanted to make sure your idea is protected before you go public during the Shark Tank pitch process this upcoming Tuesday. Tuesday. We sat down with one of the top lawyers in the city that is very familiar with intellectual property. Now, he can't provide legal advice, but he says people participating in the Shark Tank show may want to protect their idea. That means more than likely you would need what is known as a utility patent. Utility patent covers um, the way of creating something or doing something. And uh, in order to uh, obtain a utility patent, you have to be able to show that it's something that's not obvious and um, that's novel, that nobody else has ever done it. Um, and, and so that's the bar you have to clear. Uh, keep this in mind, all patents and trademarks must be filed with the United States Patent and Trademark Office. The process can be lengthy and it does involve fees. And you can pitch your idea to Shark Tank producers at an open casting call this upcoming Tuesday at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Doors open at 6, the event starts at 9. We have more information on the RTV6 app as well as the IndyChannel.com. Governor Eric Holcomb is asking the U.S. Department of Agriculture to designate nearly all of Indiana a disaster area due to crop losses caused by flooding and excessive spring rains. Holcomb made the request today in a letter to the USDA. It can be made when at least 30% of one crop is damaged or lost in a county. 88 of Indiana's 92 counties report meeting that threshold. And just into the RTV6 newsroom video of the massive fire in Tippecanoe County outside of West Lafayette. At least five homes are damaged or destroyed and you can see here several of those homes engulfed in flames and black smoke billowing from that scene. We are still working to learn if there are any injuries. Stay with RTV6 for updates as we continue to follow this breaking news. Kyle. And we've had a lot of sunshine here in central Indiana today. We could actually use a little bit of rain and we'll get some chances here. But by and large, the weekend looks like it is going to be dry. 85 for you right now, very comfortable because check out the humidity is only 32%. So it actually makes it feel a couple of degrees cooler than the actual air temperature. It's 83 for you in Bloomington, 84 in Lafayette. Castleton Fisher is coming in at 85 degrees right now. Quiet scan on Storm Team 6 radar. It will stay that way tomorrow and really most of Sunday. As we check out your forecasted temperatures by tomorrow morning, lower 60s, a few areas get getting into the upper 50s. So we're going to continue with the low humidity to start the day. Then as we go into our Saturday afternoon, the humidity builds a little bit. It's still not gonna be that real tropical oppressive feel. It will be manageable, but those temperatures starting to get a little bit warmer too. We'll find our afternoon highs getting back to around 90 degrees. 90 in Kokomo, 88 in Frankfurt. Muncie, Anderson coming in the lower 90s tomorrow afternoon. You'll find upper 80s to around 90 in Brazil, Rockville and Indianapolis at 90 degrees. 90 in Bedford, 89 in Spencer. So the heat index values will be into the middle 90s. On Sunday, going to get a little bit warmer here still. Notice how quickly we're going to warm things up back into the low 80s already by 10 a.m. A few more clouds and just a spotty shower or thunderstorm chance as we go into Sunday afternoon. Then the better chance for some rain, that will actually come with the remnants of what right now is Tropical Storm Barry. That is expected to make landfall across Louisiana during the day tomorrow. By the time we get to Tuesday morning, you can see this area of green moving into southern
northern Illinois, that will be what will spread our way. Not expecting it to be widespread heavy rainfall, but certainly some needed rain in what's been a dry spell here. I was actually talking with some farmers yesterday who said now they need the rain now that they've had a chance to get some of those crops in. Seven-day planning forecast for you now as we put it all together and we've got those highs that are going to continue to climb here a little bit the next few days. So we're back into that 90 degree heat. And again, by Sunday, Monday, that's when we're really going to notice the humidity, have those heat index values that will be in the upper 90s to around 100 degrees. And tomorrow we actually have that no zone action day across central Indiana. 30% chance for showers and storms on Tuesday. A little better chance as we get Tuesday night into Wednesday. That temporarily cools us down because look, by the end of next week, more 90s. We're going to continue adding to it. So enjoy today. Feeling good out there. Feeling yeah. good. Thank you, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. All right, we're going to toss it over to Brad for a look at sports. Thanks, team, and good evening, everyone. IndyCar returns to Canada this weekend. One driver getting a lot of attention in Toronto won't be competing in Sunday's race, but Robert Wickens will be out ahead of the field. Dave First picks up our coverage in Toronto. It's the heart of the summer stretch for IndyCar. Three straight weeks, three straight races, and it all begins here in Toronto, Ontario, where the biggest cheers, with all due respect, will come before Sunday's race. That's when Robert Wickens will drive a ceremonial pace lap to get things started. It's been just over 10 months now since his accident at Pocono. He's made immense strides in his rehab, and thanks to his team sponsor, Arrow, He'll drive a specially prepared Acura NSX using hand controls to fully control the car. He's been in it all week, says he can't wait for Sunday. We're not even one year in of what's going to be a very long recovery, but hopefully I can keep on driving because I think that's the, the best therapy I can have. And I'm a little bit concerned by uh, how eager I am to get back in the car, especially after driving yesterday because, uh, yeah, I mean, I was always having this, you know, it's kind of like the angel and the devil on each shoulder because once I get back into racing full time, the rehab is almost going to be sidelined and I need to figure out at what point am I okay to start driving again and almost give up on, on rehabbing. So with, uh, that's going to be a, that's a future problem. So right now we can just, we can just focus on this event and how, uh, how fun it's going to be. The Canadian finished third here a year ago, and this place went absolutely nuts. There's no question that ovation will be louder on Sunday. In Toronto, Ontario, day first, RTV Six Points. A pair of practice sessions today, a look at a bit of the action. Turn 11 was the tricky spot on the course. Several spinners during practice. There's Will Power getting turned around. Same for his teammate. It's points leader Joseph Newgarden and eventually goes. Graham Rahal would eventually get bit by 11 as well. Alexander Rossi would tag the wall later. We will see how that spot holds up come race day on Sunday. Here's a look at the fast laps of the day. Three drivers turning under one minute. Simon Pagano was the quickest. Scott Dixon won this race last year. He was fifth quick this afternoon. They'll qualify tomorrow race on Sunday. Look for Dave's reports from Toronto this weekend here on RTV6 News. The Swimming and Diving World Championships start this weekend in South Korea. Indiana will be well represented in the pool thanks to a dynamite team for USA Diving. Nine athletes with links to the Hoosier State have qualified. Purdue's David Bodaya qualified on the three-meter springboard, and he'll team up with Carmel's Steele Johnson in the 10-meter synchronized event. They won silver at the last Olympics in that one. Bodaya is competing at his seventh world championship and will be trying to add to his collection of five medals. Experience plays on my side. Um, I'm a little older than most of the athletes, uh, so I think that's a big plus. So I know what I'm getting myself into, at least. What, what's different about this round is that I'm doing it on a three meter. So I've done my entire career up on a 10 meter platform, and I know that. Um, the only thing that, that doesn't change is the competition. Divers will be in the pool beginning on Saturday. We wish them well. Hey, have a great weekend, everyone. We'll be back to wrap up tonight's news after one more break. That's why people feel better shopping at Meyer. Take advantage of the nice weather out there this evening. Maybe eat on the patio or go for a bike ride because it's going to heat up again this weekend. 90 degrees for you tomorrow. Lots of sunshine both Saturday and Sunday. Sunday afternoon with that high of 92. Just a spotty shower or storm. I'm just looking for a pool. Just saying it now. <laughs> there you go. Do you have a pool? I don't. I'll buy one for you. Okay. Have a good evening. We'll see you at 7.